I've done uh, the last couple of years in a uh, trying to make a little museum up there of all the smaller stuff so it can be displayed. And I insulated it here and I'm hoping to block it off so I can keep some heat in here. But this is where I'm just kind of getting it organized now. So I can show off some of the smaller stuff. And Roman gave me this here from the uh, old shoe shop so I'm I want to get, I've got a bunch of ration books and discharge papers and and things that I want to display in here. But i got to locate them now. I put them away where sometimes they're hard to go pick up and find. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well this is a great start. But here are those 250 caliber uh, 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 bullets there just came from a, a, a army base down in Yuma, Arizona where General Patton was trained troops for Africa and they found them out at the old target range so a guy, uh, um, Roger Johnson was just down there and he, he gave them to me so I got to get them tagged and who gave them to me and stuff. Mm. They find all that stuff behind where they had target range. Oh, so what are these here? War ration books, how did they work? Well everybody was just in the ration book and so you could buy gas and the tires were not available or new vehicles but uh, mostly for for gas fuel mm. yeah everybody was issued them and of course the farmers got a little more than the average person so they could keep production going yeah there's there's i got a lot of that stuff at home yet what is this picture of is that a the what this picture it says U.S. Army or yeah that's that little tractor that M7 snow tractor a white one last year last summer the um, historical put that on their button that they sold uh oh how nice yeah I got some buttons but they're not there at home and that was the, probably the worst thing I ever fixed up was that that I got it from a friend in uh, in uh, Paulson Montana. Oh, okay. It was a complete shambles. Marion thought I'd lost my mind completely when I got that thing. Oh. But we've got a little bit of everything here. There's, uh, I, I just seen one like this the other night on uh, on the pickers, you know. You oh. ever watch that? I have. This is a Japanese uh, handheld siren, and they had one there. I thought I had the only one in the country, but but this is, uh, this is Japanese. They had a silencer on there. And this, this is what... Americans had for civil defense in case they thought they were going to have an air raid or something. So okay. They wanted to warn people. They're all just handheld sirens and they, they really make a do, noise. Do they work? Is that one still functional? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, it, it works. Works real good. that at football games? Huh? Can we use that at football and other sporting events? I had a friend from Columbus that wanted to borrow that. He did borrow it. He wanted to take a recording of it. He said when his dogs bark too much, he turns the recording on. <laughs> <laughs> How nice. <laughs> and is that your bag for carrying your supplies? Yeah, that's a duffel bag carried halfway around the world. And that shirt is the rank I ended up with. Because we never wore any rank over there. I, uh, that's not my original shirt. I just uh, found that here in some clothing that people give me. But that's the, the the I was a tech sergeant. As we never wore stripes, I got I only wore my stripes about a half a day when we got down the discharge at Fort Lewis. So I, I hitchhiked over to Seattle and stopped at a pawn shop and they sold them on my uniform and that's the only day I wore them. Hmm. Was that for security so that? Yeah. So the Japanese couldn't tell who was the important people. Hmm. Oh yeah, because they wanted to pick out the the important people. And this is uh, I got a bunch of pictures here. I keep them covered up so the sun don't bother them. Oh, cool. The ones on the jeep. That was the one that was in our tent, and I'm I'm the only one that's left alive. The rest of them have all passed away. Those pictures were all taken in. New Guinea, who helped unload the first P-51 
P-51s that came to the South Pacific off that baby carrier and then pulled them over to an airstrip. And I have a tractor like that that pulls them over. It's called a Klee track. Oh. And it, this, uh, that was the best army buddy I had. The guy down there, he's from Walla Walla, Washington. Do you remember his name? Yep, Mike Bob Geist. Hmm. Seen him every year for 40 some years. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, and that's that... a military desk there. And this, this is a military desk that uh, Joel Andrews from Williston gave me that here a couple of years ago. I never seen a, a military desk that big. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> is this for a commanding officer because of the size? I suppose that it was at a, a base or something. It has the, have these on both sides where you could pull the maps out and stuff. And it, it's heavy. Hmm. It's massive. <laughs> And that orderly, orderly room and that maintenance wing over there came from a, a building at the, at the air base in Estevan. Oh. They, I happened to be up there when they started tearing it down, and I asked them if I could have them, and they said, sure, so I put them up here. Yeah. That maintenance wing is the other one. <clears throat> Got a lot of stuff. There's a periscope in here. Kenny Ingram gave me that one. We don't know what it's for, but it's just like new. Look at the look at the leather case the military had on it. Yeah. A lot of a lot of field telephones and stuff, which, which we used in World War II. Yeah, my phone is smaller than the flap on the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a belt for. Aircraft for 50 caliber. I was wondering. Yeah. I bet you could reach out and touch someone with that. Yeah. I got a somewhere around here. I got a, a whole belt of 50 calibers. I think turned back on one of the vehicles. Oh. Of course, they're not real anymore. <laughs> they're demilled, you know. Oh, I I thought they were still active. You could. Uh, oh no. Pop them off. No. Obama would have me in jail if I had them. Mm. <laughs> this is off a German tank. And uh, I just put it on a tripod to display it. It's very powerful. Yeah. What, can you see 10 miles or I mean? Oh, I've, I, yeah, I'm sure you could. It, uh, it takes a little while to focus it in, but yeah, it, it's, it's pretty strong. And then own up-to-date flying magazines. Oh yeah, I got all. I save all the all of the uh, military magazines. And over in the shop, I have an air, airborne caterpillar I'm rebuilding, and and this is a story about it. I'm I'm going to take that home and show it to some people. What they mm. did with them, they, they brought them in on uh, gliders and and fixed up bombed out airstrips and stuff. Oh, I got one over in the shop I'm rebuilding. Anything in particular about this? Uh, I've had that for 20, 30 years. I've been over in the pole bar and I'm, I, I'm not going to fix it. I'm just going to, I've got it running good. I'm just going to leave it that way so people can see how beat up a Jeep can get and still run. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Because it's, it's pretty well rusted out and everything. And here's that M7. Yeah. And this is a, the M7 snow tractor that's on that picture over there. That was designed by the government to uh, pick up down pilots in a mountainous area. And if you're familiar with tractors, it was made by Ellis Chalmers. By the radiator shell, you can rec probably recognize that. Oh, it looks familiar. And the, the government made them uh, put Jeep driveline components in it so they could service it out in the field. So it's got a Jeep engine in it and a modified Jeep transfer case. It's got high and low range. And it's got a Harley Davidson that they used to use in the three wheelers for a rear housing for a oh. drive assembly. Right. I would have never 
thought Harley was involved with this. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, they made a lot of motorcycles for the military, too. But uh, it, it's a fun vehicle. It runs good. How did they... Did they have turning brakes? So if yeah, it's got two sets of brakes. Okay. And it, it's designed. Uh, it has a pair of skis that go on here, which if I live long enough someday I'll make a set of skis for it. And the wheels just unpin and then they put the skis on it. Oh, cool. And then, you, then you can put the wheels back on there. This is a Cushman three-wheeler. It, it used to be along the Boeing. It used to be run up and down one of the the uh, plants just for servicing and stuff. This looks like a big Walter. What? It... Yeah, that's a that's a Walter snow fighter. Uh, it's not military, but it's uh, it runs good and it, it sets along that the tires started blowing off just setting, so I, I got it jacked up trying to save the tires. Oh, original. I'm having a tough time trying to find the right side of the tires for it. Oh. It's got a big six cylinder Hercules engine in it, and it was, uh, it's kind of before its time, it's a 1935, and it's 12 volt system with live hydraulics, and that was way before anybody else was even thinking about 12 volt. Is this front wheel drive? Four-wheel drive. Okay, that's yeah. what that extra shaft is for then. Yep. I bet that was before it's time too. Four-wheel drive was... Pretty much, yep. Yeah. I bet if you got one of these stuck, you were in trouble. Yeah, you would be because at the time there wasn't anything that big to pull it out with, I'm sure. And this here is a 41 carry-all. I uh, found the body down in Colorado and had no windows, no drivetrain, no nothing. So I fixed it up and had a couple of half-ton dodges so that I had the drive line components and stuff and fixed it up. And we drove, Mary and I drove that in 89 to a military meet in Portland, Oregon. It's, it's a good road vehicle. Uh -huh. That was used by the officers out in the field it's for maps and radio gear and stuff. Oh, I see they've got a lot of space in the back, so... Yeah, it's it's kind of like a Suburban, really. It's 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 a nice outfit. And, uh, Roland has fixed up all the seats. It's kind of, kind of dark to see it here, but it didn't have any any seats in there. But I had a Jeep station wagon. I knew they it had to have a split seat, you know, to get in the back and stuff, so... Oh! Roland, he upholstered it. That's great. And it is bright enough, I can see. Oh, can you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is it four or five speed up to like 50 miles an hour? It goes 50, 55 all day long. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's real comfortable to drive. Yeah. Do you have to have special licensing to have these military insignia still uh, on? The no. I, I licensed it with the Pioneer license so I could be legal and I put on turn signals, turn signals under here. Oh. You know, if, you, if you're driving the modern traffic, why you put, you gotta have turn signals. Nobody uses them though. I use them, a lot, a lot of people around here not use them. <laughs> but that's the license plate I put on it. It's called a carry-all, so. Yeah. And then one, one winter, I had a set of plans, so I, I made a 37 millimeter howitzer. Oh, is that for tailgaters? Pardon? Is that for tailgaters? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it made everything but the wheels. Hmm. And the trail splits out like a regular howitzer. I just tow it behind the carryall or something when we have a parade. Did you have to get special licensing to make the barrel or is it? S well, you can't fire. That's what I was wondering if you can... No, you, no, you'd get in trouble if you made it so you'd fire it. Yeah. But it, it, it's authentic other than that. It, it looks good. And, it, and of course, that's a half track there, a white half track. That was uh, 
I never really seen any of them over in the South Pacific. I think they were mostly in Africa and Europe. Oh. In fact, Israel still used them up till about 20 years ago. Really? Yeah. They're the last place that you could, they still manufacture tracks for them there. They, they made the last tracks that were available for them. Yeah. Oh. Do you know what the FAB stands for behind the light there? Yeah, 260s field artillery. That's what I was in. Oh, okay. Two, two field, 260s field artillery battalion. And then I was at headquarters battery. And that's what's on the, where the license tag is. Okay. Yeah, I don't know military ease. Yeah. Is this your snow buggy? I... Huh? Snow, snowmobile? Yeah, this, this is the military, first uh, snowmobile the military had. They, they built that and designed it to chase the Nazis out of Norway, but by the time they got it in production, why well, they got the uh, Nazis out of Norway. But that's what it was designed for. It, it's uh, made by Studebaker, and then of course they realized that as they were using them that they'd float. You know, uh, and then toward the end of the war, this is a later model, they made flotation cell for them. The, the late model's got four bolts here, and they put a flotation cell on the back and the front, and that was completely amphibious. Oh, nice. Yeah. Was it fast enough to get through the water that it... Three, four miles an hour in the water, so... So you weren't quite the sitting duck crossing a stream. No, but uh, Marion's uncle, uh, he gave me the shoulder patch. The weasels were first issued to, uh, for the special services that was developed in uh, Harrison, Montana at Helena. And that was their shoulder patch, 40% uh, Canadians and 60% Americans. Oh. And he was in, uh, they, they were called the Devil's Brigade. They made a movie of it. And uh, he came here every year and shed a few tears until he passed away. He lived in Minnesota. And then we have, uh, then we, this is, this is a uh, trailer with a, Jeep running gear and the uh, Studebaker people made the weasel and they said they never made a trailer. And I said, well, they made two because this is the exact lettering that was on it. Test track vehicle trailer number two, but they still don't admit they ever made it. But we found that up in uh, north of Fairbanks, Alaska. And I'm sure they were, they were experimenting with the weasel and I'm sure they were doing the same with the trailer, and the war was progressing so fast they just left the trailer there, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. this looks like it'd be a miserable ride. You have no protection. Well, it's strictly for cargo and stuff. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I see the benches, and I was wondering if people were supposed to sit here. Well, uh, anything beat walking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And this is interesting, they actually put the weight and the length on there. Oh yeah, yeah, they had it all on there. And I'm surprised that the uh, Studebaker people didn't have a record of, of um, you know, it's just a prototype, of course, but... So you've got one of the only two yep. known to existence. I don't think, I don't know if there's even number one anymore, because this is the only one I ever heard of. And then way over in the corner here is a, a British truck. It's just a, it's just a cargo truck. It's kind of hard to get through there. Ford 19, 1500. Yep. And that's kind of unique. You drive on the right hand side, you know. And I can see that there with a, with a bunch of numbers. That, yeah. Is that the serial number of the vehicle? Or? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Is this cargo or would troop ride, troops ride up here? It was, it basically cargo, I'm sure. Mm. <laughs> this is an international. Uh, the international was only issued to the Navy and the Marines. And uh, so Cal Rodenquist was in the Marines, so I put his company on here. And I couldn't tell you what that all stands for, but that was the company he was in. Mm.
This is just a half ton weapons carrier. Oh. And it's got a uh, military generator in the back, with, driven by a Jeep engine. How many kilowatts or power? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's 110 on 220. Mm -mm. What the capacity is, I couldn't tell you anymore. Mm. It'll have a tag on it someplace. Maybe I can get at it better on this other side. Can I read it? Yeah, I believe the camera, if I'm steady enough, will be able to. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's cool. Now, is this the same thing that you would have seen on MASH running their hospital? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the same year of vintage uh, pickup they'd had, too. This is a very strange gun carrier. Now, this, this, this one will fire. Oh. There with this 30 caliber air cooler. Oh, would they have one guy fire and one guy drive, or yeah. did he do both? Yeah. Yeah, and then there was room for troops in the back. Well, that must have been nice and warm right next to the engine there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'd be a poor place to be, though, because it's wide open and somebody throwing a hand grenade in there. If you couldn't throw it out in time, well, you'd be in trouble. Oh, because of the protection would keep the blast in. Sure. Right, yeah. And this thing runs so quiet, you can stand in here and you can't hear it. But if you touch it, you can feel it vibrate when it runs that quiet. Amazing. It's made by Ford of Canada. It's got a 95 horsepower V8 engine. In it. Do these panels open up if you want to show the engine off to the world? Oh, yeah, you'd have to lift it out of there. It's, it's, a, it's just a flathead V8 mm. in there. 95 horsepower. So would this go about 15, 20 miles an hour? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This looks very, it looks like it'd be fun to drive. Yeah, it, uh, it'll turn around its own length. Yeah. Oh. Prairie Command, what's the significance of that? Yeah, it's come from Canada, and I, I took it up to Estevan one year on a parade. I think I'd get some information on it, but nobody ever come forward. Hmm. But it, it came from Canada up here. To those of you watching this video, if you have information, please put it in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. And this is a, this is a World War One trailer on here. It's got hard rubber tires. Oh. And this is this is landing mat. Every airstrip in New Guinea, uh, the whole airstrip was made out of these here because it was so soft, wet, wet and muddy. Mm hmm. hmm. Kind of like a rig pad would use mm -hmm. today? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this standard issue trailer? Or? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a Korean War type, uh, vintage trailer. Yep. <coughs> Is this a military tractor or anything special? No, it's just, just a Cub Cadet. It's just, we picked it up and I use it all the time in the summertime. Oh, it looks like it'd be handy in small places to yeah. move some dirt. Yeah, it's a, it's a good running little tractor. Oh, this is a heavy looking hitch. Looks like it'd be hard to back this trailer up. It steers from both ends. It does? Yeah. It's made to go in a convoy where, you know, you turn a lot of corners. It, it, the steering is uh, welded shut on the back, but it's, it'll steer from both ends. Oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it'd turn real tight then, too. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting fact. I never knew about these trailers. Yeah. I don't take that out every year. It's kind of hard to get it in and out of here, you know. Well, you'd need a skid steer or something that you could... Yeah, I, I run it in with the forklift. <laughs> oh, that'd be just as good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, vehicles down this row or? Oh, yeah. 
Now we get down there. <coughs> this here is a, a Korean War vintage. It's a 53 GMC 6x6. You see, this is for the Army. Yeah. Anything special about this motor? Or it's no, it's just a regular uh, uh, GMC 6x6 overhead valve. This is a World War I truck here. Oh, looks a little rough to be riding. A... Will you paint this and restore it? No, I just want to keep that original right the way it is. Hmm. So I redid the seats and the windshield frame because they had rotted apart, but I, I fixed them up just the way it was. Was this 1920s or? Somebody stole the tag off from it. It's, uh, it's probably about a 1918 or 1920, yeah, hmm. right after World War II. Maybe somebody watching this can identify the because it, it came out uh, toward the end of the war because it's got uh, rubber tires on it. All the early ones had hard rubber. Oh. And then the push bumper? Or? Uh, well, yeah, you could. It, it's it's, it's kind of unique. It's spring-loaded. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know why they did that, but it, it's been hit a time or two. <laughs> it's just bent. Yeah. And then crank start, that must have been an adventure when it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you left this idling as long as you could. Yeah. It runs pretty good, but terrible thing to drive. Oh, do you have problem getting the right kind of gra gas formulation? Well, uh, no power steering and the shifts hard and all that, you know. Hmm. But at the time, I suppose it was all there was, you know. Oh, is that dual wheels or? Uh, no, I see it, just it, one with an extra it, rim. I think it, at, time, at one time it probably had duals on it, yeah. That's, this is all very fascinating equipment. I yeah. hope we can get a decent archive for you. Yeah. And then is this, this looks like a more comfortable troop carrier. Well, this is the one that, uh, we come to, this is the one we drove to Alaska in 92. We lived in the back of the truck for a month. <coughs> they had a, they formed a military convoy to celebrate 50 years of the Alaskan Highway. And, uh, this is built by Studebaker. Up on the dash is a, is a map. They, get, they made everybody a brass map of the route. Hopefully I got that good enough. Yeah, we, we were gone a month. We drove 5,280 miles in this. And we were, they had uh, several packets of uh, five in a, in a packet and got A on the windshield yet. We kept that. We were, we led the convoy. Oh. Because yeah. yeah. the Studebaker was the predominant truck on the highway and this was built by Studebaker. Six by six, I mean all wheel drive? Yep. Those look like some aggressive tires to... Did they go through a lot? I mean, would they spin through and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we plow snowed one of the 6x6 six for up till two, three years ago. Oh. GMC, and it makes a wonderful snow plow. Yeah. Cummins turbo diesel, that... Is this a... That's a homemade tractor. And, uh... Got a Model A engine in it, the John Deere front end, and a, some kind of a truck rear end. I just got it and got it running good and fixed the steering wheel and and fixed it up so it, I just, you know, display it. Oh, it looks so small, it looks like an airplane tug. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. And this, this, this is one of my favorites. This is 
Well, it showed that picture of them P-51s being towed back to the airstrip. Yes. This is this is the type of tractor that, that towed them. It's a cleat track. It's a high-speed rubber track vehicle. It was designed to uh, service aircraft. It had a light plant on it and a welding unit. And on the on the back end, it had an 18,000 pound air compressor, which I can't find one that was driven there to air struts on the bombers and stuff. 18,000 yep. mm -hmm. PSI or? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. My, that's a lot of pressure. And it had uh, a tow bar that laid here where they where they towed the vehicles. No. Oh. Do you know what this particular insignia means? Eighth Air Force. Oh. Bill Baker, a real good friend of ours, was in Eighth Air Force, so I put I had some kids, grandkids, painted that under for me. Oh, it looks like an actual sticker. I didn't know it was painted. No, it was. They came here one evening and about an hour painted that, but they had four or five cans of spray paint and some decals, and they looked real authentic. So is it the center one your shift, and then the other two the brakes? For... Just steer, that's what just steered on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a fun vehicle to drive. I would love the opportunity if it, if you ever pull it out just I to see it. it. Every year at the Tarsing Show. Okay. Yeah. Right. I built the cab. Roman helped me make the top. Roman made the seats for it. And I built all of the hoods, side panels, and all that stuff for it. And is that the original serial number? Or? Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the few vehicles mm -hmm. that were 12-volt in World War II. Oh, were they 24 or 48 yeah. prior to that? It's 12 volt, but it's two 12 volt batteries in here. Hmm. And the weasel was 12 volt too. That's the last thing we did overseas. Or we were converting everything from six volt to 12 volt. Okay. For their radials. Oh. Yeah. Well, is there the tractors up front there or that? Other Jeep? Yeah, we can walk through here. <coughs> this is a small case tractor, a utility type, but it, they had them in the military too, so when I get around to it, I'm going to paint it up so it can display it better. Oh, cool. Yeah. Now, do you know that this have a live PTO or? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. And this is a six by six Dodge. They came out toward the end of the war, and I I bought two of them, you know, junkers, and trying to make one out of the two. That's one of my next projects when I get around to it. Hmm. I bought this to eventually make a wrecker out of it, but as the time progressed, why well, everybody wanted to. A wrecker with air conditioning and power steering and all that, so I oh. gave up on that. <laughs> but that was built by Dodge too, just like the carryall was back there. And is this a military motor? Or? Yep, that's going to go in here when the time comes. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Then I got a lot of. Uh, Trunks or military that people have been giving me. I, I hope to get them all. That was uh, uh, Bill Baker's. I just got that here this summer, so I'm going to get them up and display them. And up on top back there, there's a original bunk bed made out of wood that was in all the army camps and stuff. Oh, I didn't think you'd be in one spot long enough to have a bunk. Well, basic training. Most of them had bunks. When you got overseas, you never had something like that. Was this military or just? No, no, I just got that to help move stuff around. 
Now this looks, was that air base? Yeah, that's an air base uh, for hauling uh, ammunition, bombs or whatever to load aircraft. Oh. That, that came from a minor air base about 27 years ago. Yes. Do you have anything else you want to say about the equipment, or? Oh, on, under the bench here, I've got a. Uh, under the bench, I've got a Coleman uh, aircraft heater for heating up uh, airplane motors, but I, it's buried. You can't see it. I, stuff like that, I got to get out and get them in the open. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been John Benter's mm -hmm. museum. We greatly appreciate his restoration efforts and care of the equipment. Yeah, I'm glad you could come down. I wish it was a little warmer, so it been more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do this again at the uh, Threshing Bee. If, yeah, right. Yeah. Then it'll be warmer and more comfortable. Yep, right. <sighs> well, thank you again, sir. Okay. Venter's Collectibles.